Prata i granda palos ke telebre ne maya sanda prata baya i grapa to ke telebre de barasa kala barros ne baya. Matengele de bose kele de bros katala de baba ba. Membro gandoje kele de boroko to se kele ne manangle de bro da ze kele de bruna katala de baba. Legere ke desh ke tele de bro no gozo kola de boroko to se kele de bere ke tene keli anama. Membro da ze kele de bro da katala de bamre ke dikele ne mosa. Nangra gadoja kele de boroko to si kele di barakata na kile ne manga. Ege boja kele de bro da ze kele de bro na katala de bamre ke dikele di baya. Membro da zo kolo de bro da ke lebe lege ne mozo kolo de boroko to si kele de barakata ni keli ne mana geya. Ege boja kele de bro da katala de bamre. Rakoto bile de bamre ne kele de bamre ne ke de keli ne mozo toli de barakata na. Eh, maja kele ne, eh, maja kele ne mereke. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In the name of Jesus. Father, we rejoice that we have access into the deep things of God this morning. Thank you for the privilege we have to fellowship with one another in the light of your word. We walk in the light even as you are in the light. And our fellowship is in the light. So I ask that as your word comes with clarity, an army is rising all over the blue marble planet. Men, men and women that are focused, dedicated and passionate about the advancement of your kingdom. And we rejoice that disciples are raised. We rejoice that souls are saved massively as the gospel continues to go forth with power and authority. Thank you that your people are being equipped and the body of Christ is the better for it. Jesus is glorified. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together this morning. As you say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service all over the world on Facebook, YouTube, and Kingdom Life Network. And all our campuses, we're glad to have everybody connected. And we rejoice that the word is going to build you up and you will never be the same again. Can I have a powerful amen? amen. Are we excited about the privilege of learning every day and growing? Can we give the Lord a praise this morning? Amen. Glory! Hallelujah! You can be seated in the heavenlies. Let's get in the word of God this morning. Now, just as we're getting the word, I want to also say this both for our TV audience and our social media audience. We, within this conference, we intentionally decided to allow you to be a part of the prayer. It is intentional because the training is holistic. We are not just training you to know the word of God. We're also training you to pray together. If you observe carefully in the book of Acts, there were a lot of congregational prayers. Even the day of Pentecost happened while they were together in one accord, in one place, praying. And throughout the, the, the book of Acts, apostolic, apostolic tradition or part of apostolic tradition is to pray together. It's not a device to while away time. It's not a device to, uh, to you know, waste time or to wait for people or something. No, prayer, it's part of the plan. It's part of the training is part of evangelism. Is part of discipleship. Jesus took his disciples to pray. He get, got them to pray in a place and he went further to pray. It was a tradition among the apostles. The Bible says they were together in one place. The Bible says when they went out to preach and they were persecuted, they came back to their company and reported. And then they lifted up their voices to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God. They lifted up their voices together in one accord. It was an apostolic tradition. So every time we ask you to pray together with us and we give you the privilege of being a part of the prayer service here, it is, it is intentional. We want you to join us in praying because you're a part of this house. Moreover, it's important to also note that you cannot have a successful ministry without a prayer life. You cannot have a successful evangelism without prayer. Prayer generates power that makes the word of God easy to be received. So please, it's important, you know, through this training. Before now, when we just come to the service, we just get into the word. And, but in the, because we are training, and every time we're doing a training conference throughout this year, 
we will make sure you are a part of the prayer session because that is part of the training. Can I have a powerful amen? All right, we're looking at a demonstration of the spirit and power, how the gospel is preached, how the gospel is preached. We have established how that the gospel must not be invented. The gospel must not be invented or innovated. We don't invent what to say. We do not innovate what to say. We say what we have been asked to say. We say the Bible or the gospel is not subject to what you think. We also establish that the gospel is not subject to historical facts being proven. We also establish that the gospel is not archaeological facts being discovered. Yesterday we said that the gospel is not scientific confirmation. The gospel is Christ's history told by the spirit alone. The gospel is Christ's history told by the spirit alone. The truth about it is Christ alive after the death. That's what brings faith for salvation. Christ alive after the death is what brings faith for salvation. And that has been emphasized. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 to 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 to 3. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Can somebody say the gospel? All right. The gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand. Verse 2. By which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Verse 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Next verse. Verse 4. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Verse 5. Verse 5. And that he was seen of Cephas then of the twelve. Now Paul opens up and he said these facts that he's talking about, they are facts that cannot be debated. They are facts that are called the gospel. Then he said in verse 10 of the same first Corinthians 15 verse 10, verse 10, but, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. So he now said, I am a preacher of this gospel, not by skill. I'm a preacher of this gospel, not by skill. In other words, to communicate this message is a function of the grace of God. To communicate the message of his resurrection is a function of the grace of God. It's not training in school. It's not oratory and it's not a craft. It's the grace of God. The word there is charis. The grace of God, charis. Now, all right, charis is, that, is something God gave without merit or qualification. Charis is something which God gave without merit or qualification. Look at something very important. He stresses in verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse number 14. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. That is the power of the message. That the power of the message is the resurrected Christ. The power of the message is the resurrected Christ. Or else, it's like any other thing on television. If Christ is not risen, then is our preaching vain. Greek scholars have said something, and rightly so. That there's a way, brother Paul used that word reason. That he didn't use the word reason in past tense. Actually, the way brother Paul used that word, you know, reason is actually like, if Christ has not rise, Christ has not rise. He used a present continuous. He rose, he rise, he is risen. And he is continually risen. It's not like a past event. Okay? So, is the word engerio. Engerio. E-G-E-I-R-O. 
All right, that if Christ is not risen, is not a past tense. Again, he repeats that same statement in verse 17. That's critical and that's very instructive. First Corinthians 15, 17. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. All right, so he now is indicative of a present continuous to say that he is rise or you know, it's not like he rose. He is rise or he is alive. He is alive. He put it as a past tense with a present tense indicate, indicator. A past tense with a present tense indicator. So he's indicating that the resurrection is past but has continuous effect. That is, he rose, he's risen, he's rising or he's alive. Can I hear a powerful amen? It's not historical in the sense that it's not something that happened. It's a fact of the now. The resurrection of Christ is a fact of the now. Even though it's something that happened. That is, he used the fact that Christ is alive now. That is the message that we preach. That Christ is alive now. That is the message that we preach. Our message is not the message of death. Our message is not the message of burial. Our message is a message of the resurrected Christ. But of course, there can be no resurrection if there was no death and burial. But the emphasis is on the resurrection. And earlier on, we said in John chapter 16 verse 7. John 16 verse number 7. Put it up for me. John 16 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Verse 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Verse 9. Of sin because they believe not on me. Verse 10. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. So Jesus talking to the disciples said, the spirit will show these truths to the world. The spirit will show the truths of the resurrection to the world. Now that John chapter 16 deals with the ministry of the gospel. The ministry of the gospel. Look again at Matthew 28 verse 18. Matthew 28 verse number 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Next verse. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Next verse. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. Go ye therefore and make disciples. Go ye therefore and make disciples. And we say the word disciple is the word matetua. That is put people in a school. Turn people into students. To make disciples mean to turn people into students or put people in a school. So the preaching of the gospel is not an emotional thing. Just like you don't get into a math class as a lecturer of mathematics. And then suddenly you say to the students, I feel like teaching integrated science. No. You came into the class, you are a math teacher. There is a job description for your employment to teach mathematics. You don't go and say, well, I don't feel like teaching mathematics today. I feel like teaching English. It's not an emotional thing. So that will mean, therefore, that there is a deliberate training that has a curriculum called disciple making. It's a deliberate training that has a curriculum. The making of disciples is a deliberate training that has a curriculum. He says, make disciples of every nation. In other words, it's a singular message for everybody. Make disciples for every, from, you know, from every nation. Meaning that it is a singular message for everybody, irrespective of nation, irrespective of race, irrespective of background, irrespective of societal, you know, societal class, one message for all nations. 
Are you still in the building? So it's not a message that is tailored to anyone specifically. It's the same message to Jews, Gentiles, rich, poor, the same truth that they need to hear. We are to enlist these people in school. We are to turn people into students of Christ. We are to turn people into students of Christ. So evangelism is incomplete until you disciple the people you evangelize. You evangelize and disciple. You don't just give birth to a baby and tell the baby look for a mother. No, you evangelize and you disciple. You evangelize and you disciple. That's the way it's supposed to be. You evangelize and you disciple. Make disciple of every nation. That word nation is the Greek word ethnos. Ethnos refers to people from different backgrounds, language, culture, and tribe. Ethnos, ethnic, ethnos. So make disciples from every ethnos, culture, tribe, people, class, from every race, from every language group. Make disciples. He says anywhere you get to, preach the same message. We looked at the word to teach them. To teach them. Matthew 28, 20. To teach them the things I have commanded you, thy does go. Dedicated teaching. The things I have commanded you is the Greek word, thy does go. Which means, which means dedicated teaching. Then we remember, we also saw a word entelomai. Entelomai means what I have done. Teach them what I have done. You know, go and, co he commanded us to go and teach the people the things he has commanded us. What has he commanded us? The things he has done. Enter Lomai. The things he has done. And lo, I am with you also, always. We also looked at the word preach in Mark 16, 15. Preach. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The word preach is the Greek word keruso. K-E-R-U-S-S-O. Keruso. Go and preach the gospel. In Luke 24, 47. Luke 24, verse number 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations. The same message preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. The same message preached in his name, among all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Repentance and remission of sins should be preached. Now the word Caruso is like a newscaster. A newscaster. You are not supposed to tell us your opinion. You strictly follow the script. You strictly follow the script. That's the preaching of the gospel. You are not supposed to add skill or entertainment to the preaching or a viewpoint to it or an experience. A skill, an entertainment, a viewpoint or an experience is not supposed to be added. You follow the, strict, the, the script strictly. You are meant to preach what you have been given to say. Keruso, the Greek word. Again, that word is used there in John 20, 21. John 20, 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Next verse, 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. The word em emphusoa and the word lombano. He breathed was not him doing f f f We've established that. Emphasio is something that happened inside of them. Actually, their own breathing, not his own. Their own, not his own. They, they, they came alive on the inside. The, their understanding of the scriptures came alive. We saw it reiterated in Luke 24, 45. Luke 24, verse number 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. That they might understand the scriptures. They also received understanding. We saw the ministry of the spirit as well. Yesterday we took time to look at that. Now listen again carefully. John 16, 7 to 10. 
Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. When he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. Did you observe? When I depart, I will send him unto you. So my departure, my departure is the sending of the spirit. Did you observe that? So my departure is not total departure. My departure, as I move out, the spirit comes in. So it's not departure, it's arrival. Did you observe that? Put that scripture again for me so you can see it. Verse 7. Verse 7, verse 7, 16, 7. John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So my departure will be his arrival. Which automatically is my departure is my arrival. Is it clear here? All right, now. So, Jesus was talking about the preaching of the gospel in that context where we just read. When he said he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment, he will do that convincing via preaching. Via preaching. We said he is referring to the message of his resurrection. We read that in John 15, 25 to 27. He was relating with the resurrection and with the ministry of the gospel. It has nothing to do with a personal revelation or a personal experience or a personal encounter. It's a preaching of the gospel. It's a fact that the gospel is a message. Please write down. It's a fact that the gospel is a message. The gospel is a message. It's a fact that the gospel is a message. It is not a reaction. It is not a reaction. The gospel is not a situational discussion. It is not a reaction and it's not a situational discussion. That's why you don't ask your audience before you preach. You don't ask your audience, what do you people want me to preach? It's not a reaction. It's not a situational discourse. That is why social work is not the gospel. Social work is not the gospel. For example... We go on the street now and sweep the streets. There is no reward in heaven for that. We go out this Saturday with our brooms and sweep the streets of Uyo. We have just done humanistic service. a social service. Or we go to a village. You know, and when we go to the village, we help the village to create, you know, build things for them. Schools, build homes for them. a social service which the Lions Club do and other societal organizations do because it's humanity. Or you're passing by the road and you saw a car hit somebody and you waited and carried the person to the hospital. That is not the preaching of the gospel. That is responding to humanity, which is very good. But that is not the gospel. The preaching of the gospel is not social service. Is a message. The gospel is a message. Please, this is very important. The gospel is a message. Jesus never thought he was saving anybody when he gave them bread and fish. It was not for salvation he gave them bread and fish. He saw that they don't faint on the road. He was just being human, you know. He was just being human. He said, ah, 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 we have finished preaching the gospel now. But the way these people are looking, they could faint on their way home. Do we have any food for them? He said, no, we don't have any food. Oh, Jesus, please just let them go like that. He said, no, they can't go like that. They can faint on the road. Anybody with bread and fish here, yeah? anybody with something. And the little boy offered his lunchbox. Jesus multiplied and gave them a miracle. They all ate, they were full, and they were able to go home. That's humanity. That's not the gospel. Feeding people is not the gospel. Breakfast service is not the gospel. Calling people for afternoon lunch is not the gospel. The gospel is a message. The gospel is a message. But you can cook food and invite people to eat. And while they are eating, you preach to them. But don't ever, don't ever substitute the message for a societal service. Don't ever substitute the message for social service. 
All right? So, the facts of the resurrection is the message itself. The facts of the resurrection is the message itself. The facts in its raw form, unadulterated, unrevised. That's the message. So, Jesus, therefore, gave an empowerment for this message. Luke 24, 49. Tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Acts 1, 8. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. We said that. That means that the message and the ability to communicate the message are given. The message and the ability to communicate the message are given. You don't generate the message and you don't seek for the ability to preach it. But the message and the ability to preach the message, they are all gifted to us as a work of grace. You don't say, well, what can I do to preach the gospel? Nothing. Just preach it and preach it according to the script. It's what he has given us to preach the gospel with. We don't devise. We don't devise. We don't try to create what will sound nice. We don't try to make the message appealing. We don't try to make the message attractive. We give it the way it has been given to us. You are no wiser than the message giver. The way he gave us is the way we preach it. We're going to see a few things in a moment. We said that in the days of Jesus, there were sports. There were creative arts, comedy, entertainment. All were available in Jesus' day. But he never used any of it for the preaching of the gospel. Not even when he taught parables. Even when he taught parables, he didn't call comedians to come and make people laugh. Even when he taught parables, he didn't call entertainers to come and entertain the crowd. Even though he said their IQ was low, yet he never substituted the gospel for entertainment. Am I preaching here? Yeah. There was, I mean, the, the best was available in his time. They had the best in his time in the Roman Empire. They had the best in his time among the Greeks. They had the best in his time. Yet, he never used any of those arts as a substitute for the preaching of the gospel because the gospel is not just a message. It has its own method. The gospel is not just a message. It has its own methods. The gospel didn't just say, I mean, the gospel don't just say is a message. How we preach it may differ. Uh -uh. The gospel is not just a message that we can preach it anyhow we like. No, it has its own methods. The message has its own method. There is no such liberty given to anybody to preach it anyhow he likes. Of course, you know that no matter the age of a lie, it doesn't make it a truth. A lie remains eternally a lie. That something has been on for a long time doesn't make it right. That preaching, people have been preaching it their own style doesn't make it right. All right? What, what, what it's supposed to be will be what it is supposed to be forever. Amen. So he says, go. Go into all the world. Go into all the world. But he didn't just say go. He said you'll be endued with power. There is power for going. You shall receive power. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive of the Spirit. In other words, it's not just a go. There is an ability in the mission that he gives to the church. There is an ability in the mission that he gives to the church. I want to repeat that. There is an ability in the mission that he gives to the church. So firstly, there is a message. And that message does not differ from person to person. There is a message. And that message does not differ from person to person. Then there is an ability. And the ability also does not differ. The same message, the same ability. The same gospel, the same Holy Spirit. Endued with power. Did you observe that on the day of Pentecost... All of them received and spoke same. All of them received and spoke the same. There are no different Holy Ghosts 
is the same Holy Ghost, the same ability to preach the same message. Teaching good? The same ability to preach the same message. Romans 16.25 now. <clears throat> Pay attention. Romans 16.25. Now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. Let me ask you again the question I asked this today. What is the gospel? Can I hear you louder? What is the gospel? Can I hear you like you have some life this morning? What is the gospel? The preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Next verse. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of the faith. The preaching of Jesus Christ is the Greek word keruso to announce like a town crier or to announce like a newscaster. Then preaching here in Romans 16, the preaching, my gospel, which is the preaching of Jesus Christ. That word preaching there in Romans 16, 25 is the word kerugma, a noun of keruso. Kerugma, K-E-R-U-G-M-A. Kerugma is the noun for keruso. Kerugma is a particular message or a specific information. That means the message is specifically the message of Jesus Christ. The message is specifically the message of Jesus Christ. A definite message. It doesn't change with time. It doesn't adjust with situations. And is the same for all nations. It doesn't change with time. It doesn't adjust for situations. And is the same for all nations. You know the other day I was watching something. And I got excited. Uh, on, 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 on my device. They are coming out with an invention. Or they have actually come out with it. It is called hologram. Hologram is part of this uh, artificial intelligence. What the hologram does is that if I put on the hologram and I stand here and I want to preach in Japan, okay? Once I put it on what I am saying, the same me, the same my voice will be speaking Japanese to the Japan people and they will hear me preaching as I'm preaching to you in English and they will see the same me preaching to them in Japanese, in Chinese, in Arab, in India, in all the languages around the world. It's called hologram. That's a powerful invention for the gospel. That's a powerful one. People think while we're looking for money, we'll buy such things. Amen. That's why we need money to get the gospel out there. Hologram. The hologram. It's a, it's a discovery that's, that just came out. I, I watched the demonstration of it and I was just excited. We can get the gospel to dialects. We can get the gospel to people, languages all over the world, Spanish, you know, French, and all the different languages around the world. One, the man, you just put on the device and you start talking. And suddenly, you're speaking their language. The same person speaking their language without any alteration. It's not like uh, lip syncing. It's the same person speaking it. Isn't that wonderful? I say, isn't that wonderful? You know, I, I mean... It, God is giving people creative ideas to make this gospel get everywhere so nobody has an excuse not to be built up in the message of Christ. You know, some of the way we preach and teach this world, you'll be wondering, how can an interpreter cope? God has solved the way an interpreter can cope. Because if you have an interpreter, sometimes you preach, you will summarize it. You will just summarize it. When you drop one heavy statement, the interpreter will say, just like he said. Let's move on. <laughs> But now, every language on earth can have the privilege of hearing everything properly articulated. God punished the devil. Can somebody shout hallelujah? So, that, that, there's a definite message that cannot be adjusted. It doesn't adjust to situations. It's for all nations. Paul uses the word, the revelation of the mystery. When he uses that word preaching, 
It is used by Jesus Christ himself. It's not just Paul that used the word kerugma. Jesus used that word in Matthew 12, 41. Matthew 12, 41. Luke 11, 32. Put up Matthew 12, 41 for me. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas, the kerugma of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. It's repeated in Luke eleven thirty two 32 for the preaching of Jonah, the message of Jonah. And you will see the message of Jonah in Jonah 3, 5 and Jonah 4, 1 to 2. You will see the message of Jonah in Jonah 3, 5 and Jonah chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. They repented at the Kerugma, the preaching of Jonah. Are you still in the building? The preaching of Jonah. In other words, it was a specific message. Jonah went to tell them about the kindness of God. Not when I get there, I shall know what to say. No. In evangelism, don't just go and say, when I get there, the Spirit will tell me what to say. No. It is a prepared message that you are already aware of before you get there. Because the message is one. The message is one. Before I get there, I have been given what to say. I won't be intimidated by the intellect I meet or their literacy or their stiff nakedness. It has no bearing at all. I will preach it the way it's given. It's a message that has no alteration based on the situation. He says, the preaching of Jesus Christ. The preaching of Jesus Christ. Are you still in the building? The preaching of Jesus Christ. Now, in 1 Corinthians 1.21, you will see Brother Paul. 1 Corinthians 1.21 For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. It pleased God by the pre foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. That word, the foolishness of preaching is the kerugma. The specific information of preaching. The inf specific information of Keruso. The specific information that the town crier is announcing. Alright now, Brother Paul will use that word very frequently. Look at 1 Corinthians 2 verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. But in demonstration of the spirit and of power, my speech and my kerugma, specific information, specific information. First Corinthians 15 verse 14, kerugma. First Corinthians 15 14. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain. How many of us? Have gone to deliver a message before. Have you ever been sent to deliver a message before? And then when you arrive there, you say to the people, what they asked me to actually bring here, I have changed my mind. I've changed my mind. After looking at you people, I have changed my mind. I will do another thing. No, no messenger behaves like that. When you are sent to take a message, you take, you take it there, you deliver it and you find your way. True or false? Preachers are message carriers. And there is a specific message we have been sent to deliver. And when we go to people, we deliver the message. Their reaction, notwithstanding. Their disposition, notwithstanding. How they keep their face. Have you ever seen me change what I want to preach because of the way you kept your face? No. When I come here, I don't look at your faces. I just start talking. I preach. I don't look at your faces. Because you didn't send me. The person that sent me, sent me to give you a message. It's not me. It's a messenger. So if you're not happy with what I'm saying, you're angry with the messenger, not me. I mean, yeah, the, 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 the owner, the giver of the message. I'm just a messenger. I'm just a messenger. I bring it and I deliver. I bring it and I deliver to you. The way the sender gave me. Take, this is what Oga said. Thank you. He said, I'm not happy. Tell Oga. <laughs> I'm angry. Tell Oga. Me, I'm just an errand boy. I just brought to you the message the way it was scripted for me. And I'm not supposed to add to what is on the script. 
because the one that sent me the message is going to be responsible for the message I brought. And if I add my own, I will be responsible for what I added. Are we clear here? Kerugma, specific information. You didn't call for Christ to die. So you can't determine what saves a man. You didn't call for Christ to die. So you cannot determine what saves a man. That is why it is a specific preaching. 1 Corinthians 15, 14 again. 1 Corinthians 15, 14 again. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. 2 Timothy 4, 17. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching, the kerugma, might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might, might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. That, put it up. Don't take it out yet. That means when I go to preach, I will meet lions. I will meet tigers. I will meet people that operate like beasts. I will meet people that may be accommodating. And in the course of preaching, I may encounter very, very, very animalistic behaviors. I may encounter people that operate like lions. But because I am not going on my own, after I preach, the one that sent me will deliver me from their mouth. I want to read that scripture again. That's why you don't fear when you preach the truth of the gospel. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lions. Are you still in the building here? Titus 1.3 Titus 1.3 But had in due times manifested this word through preaching, through kerugma, specific information, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God, our Savior, manifested his word through preaching. God's method is what we are preaching. God's method is what we are preaching or what we are presenting. He has manifested his word through preaching. Through preaching. The word of God is manifested when we preach. When we preach the script. In Mark 16, 20. Mark 16, 20. Mark 16, 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. Touch your neighbor say, we will preach everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming their tears eh? and confirming their complaints. What did the Lord confirm? And confirming their entertainment and confirming their comedy eh? and confirming their drama. Eh? What was the Lord confirming? The world. He confirmed the word. Which word? The word that was kerusoed. The word that was preached. The word that was announced. Which word? The word that has been given through the ages. The message that the prophets prophesied. Which has been fulfilled. The Lord walked with them. Confirming it with signs following so it's not a response to human needs. The gospel is not a response to human needs. That is why it's a universal truth. Whether it's a prosperous country or a poor country, it is the same message. Whether it's a prosperous country or a poor country, it is the same message. Whether it's a prosperous country or a poor country is the same message. It's not a reaction. It's not a message that meets needs. Did you observe that Jesus did not give us humanitarian support 
for us to go into the world. He just gave us a message. He just gave us a message. I discovered that as people get, you know, uh, more exposed, they think they can enlighten the gospel. You know? As people get more exposed, then they think they can improve on the message. You know, they can reorganize the message. That is God is too local. Uh, the word of God needs enlightenment. They can reorganize it. <laughs> As people begin to travel around, then suddenly they feel like the gospel is too archaic. The gospel is not a response to human need. It's a specific message. Jesus is so focused. In Luke 12, 13 to 14, look at something here that will interest you. Luke 12, 13 to 14. And one of the companies said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. Next verse. And he said unto him, man, man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? <laughs> See the focus? Jesus is so focused. They brought to him extracurricular assignment. He said, that's not my job description. I didn't come to help you share the profit of business. That's not my job description. The guy is so focused. Is it wrong to settle dispute? No, but that's not the gospel. Settling people's quarrel is not the gospel. It's not wrong to settle it, but don't call it the gospel. Then look at verse 15, what Jesus will say to these guys. That Luke chapter 12 verse 15. And he said unto them, the person that came to report the matter, the person that came to say, Jesus, my brother has cheated me. Please tell him not to cheat me. <laughs> You're not hearing me. You, you have been cheated in a business. Then you brought the matter to Jesus to come and help you talk to your brother to share profit with you. Jesus now said, I'm not a judge over you. Then when you are about to go, Jesus said, beware of covetousness. <laughs> beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. That as you are going, beware of covetousness. <laughs> are you understanding? First of all, I'm not a judge over you and your brother. However you people want to share your business profit is your problem. But as you are going, beware of covetousness. Don't go and fight your brother and die young. Beware of covetousness. For a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. That means, if it is about to take your life, leave it. Just leave it and be alive. Because if you are alive, you can do more business. But if you die now, you will lose that one and lose the one that is in the future. So my friend, as you are going, Beware of covetousness. That's the only message I have for you. <laughs> Jesus was so focused. He was very focused. It is there he gave the parable of the rich fool. It is in that same scripture. He gave the parable of the rich fool. Who was not rich towards God. Who said I have acquired so much. My soul. Enjoy. And he said tonight your soul shall be required of you. And we shall see who, whose, whose it shall be that you have gathered. He is dealing with covetousness and greed here. Are you still in the building? Are you still in the building? There was a man called John who was arrested for telling the truth. He was arrested for telling the truth. He was not arrested for preaching the gospel. <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. He was arrested for telling the truth. He was not arrested for preaching the gospel. He went and confronted Her Herodias. And ask him why he married Herod. And ask him why he married eh, his brother's wife. That's not the gospel. That's not the gospel. He went and confronted him and asked the king why he married his brother's wife. The king took him and put him inside prison. That's not the gospel. John the Baptist didn't die for preaching the gospel. He died for telling the truth. <laughs> You're not hearing me. I say, you're not hearing me. Okay. <laughs> and Jesus said nothing about it. <laughs> 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 
Jesus said nothing about it. Jesus kept quiet. And Jesus did not go, go to visit John. Jesus didn't go to prison. He didn't go to say, ah, John, John, even though you are the one who baptized me, I don't like the way they are treating you. Take heart, cheer up, and be strong. Jesus did it. Jesus went about preaching the gospel. That thing that John failed to do, let him do it. He went about preaching the gospel. And John got angry. John got angry. You mean Jesus is in town and I'm here and he has not done anything about me? But the question is, is it the preaching of the gospel that took you there? No. What took you there? Tell him truth to power. Okay. Stay there. Stay there because you're closer to power and keep telling truth to power. You, never been, you have never been sent to tell truth to power. You've been sent to preach the gospel. Is there something wrong with telling truth to power? Nothing wrong, but that's not the gospel of Christ. I'm teaching good this morning. Nothing wrong, but that's not the gospel of Christ. Jesus simply said, I came for a purpose. I'm here on an assignment. When people are on, on a mission, they don't get distracted. When people are on a mission, they don't allow side talks to distract them from their focus. See, people that talk by the side, that is all they have to do to talk by the side. People that are on a mission don't have time to answer people talking by the side. And they don't have time to explain to people talking by the side why they did what they did. Because while you are explaining, you don't have time. Time is not on your side. So let them be talking by the side. You keep working. You stay focused. Don't be distracted. Foolish and unlearned questions. Avoid. Don't spend energy explaining to a dummy who has accepted dumbiness. Is there English like that? Who has accepted to be a dummy? You're explaining, huh? Huh? Okay. When the Holy Spirit gives you light, we can talk. But for now, I have other serious things to talk about. Foolish and unlearned. What is foolish? The word foolish in the Greek is idiotic. A fool is an idiot. That's the way it is in the Greek. So, idiotic and ignoramus questions. Avoid. Don't answer them. Are you here? Don't waste your energy on them. Just stay focused. The energy you are wasting on people that have, not, have made up their mind not to know the truth can be used to help those that want to know the truth. I don't look at distractions and I don't look at detractors. My eyes are too focused. I am too, I am too passionate for my assignment to have time to answer people that are distracting me. I'm not even aware they exist. Maybe that's what's annoying them more. I'm not even aware they exist. And I'm not noticing. Jesus didn't send us to say truth to power. He sent us to preach the gospel. Amen? Jesus came for a purpose. Look at Acts chapter 1 verse 3. Acts chapter 1 verse number 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. He taught them the kingdom of God for 40 days, his disciples. Now everybody say with me very loud, the kingdom of God is spiritual. Can I hear you say it again? So he preached the kingdom of God to them. The kingdom of God. It was at variance with what was popular in the time. So the Jews, we are used to secular kingdom. After Jesus had finished all his meetings, they were used to secular kingdom. After Jesus had finished all his meetings, he now told them in Acts chapter 1 verse 5. Put it up. Acts chapter 1 verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. I have given you the message 40 days. 40 days. I've been teaching you for 40 days. But there is power.
power to preach the message. You shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For the message I have taught you, power is coming to enable you to preach the message. Are you still in the building? Now, look at verse 6. Look at their response. Verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, when will thou, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? The word restore is apokatistemi. A-P-O-K-A-T-H-I-S-T-A-M-I in the Greek. Used for, for regaining something that was lost. Regaining something that was lost. At this time, their need was that they were under a tyrant. And they wanted freedom politically. They didn't want the tyranny of their king. So when Jesus was talking about power, they were asking Jesus if he was going to regain for them political freedom. In their mind, Jesus' mission was to restore political kingdom. How many of you remember that, uh, you know, when Jesus died, they said we thought he was the one. So for a long time, their dream for following Jesus was politics. He was going to bring back political relevance. He was going to structure the church in the center of governmental affairs. Jesus was going to rule over this world. And they forget. I don't know why people do not study their Bible carefully. They forget that Jesus already announced, my kingdom is not of this world. He already told them, I didn't come here to struggle power with the governor of your state. I didn't come here to struggle power with the president of your country. I didn't come for any of those. I have a kingdom that does not come by observation. I have a kingdom that is not a physical system and structure in the society. My kingdom is not of this world. Say it again with me. The kingdom of God is spiritual. Say it one more time. So they were watching, waiting for Jesus to restore political power. That word apokatistemai, you can see it in Matthew 12, 13. Matthew 12, 13. Matthew 17, 11. Mark 3, 5. Mark 8, 25. Mark 9, 12. Luke 6, 10. Hebrews 13, 19. Hebrews 13, 19. 19. Give us what was existing before you came. Restore to us political relevance. Restore to us business opportunities. Restore to us, you know, the empire. Restore to us the military. Make us relevant. Give us societal control. Make us to take charge in entertainment. Make us to take charge you know, in the media, restore to us the power. That is what their need was. That is what their need was. And Jesus did not try to meet their needs. He did not try to meet their needs. He actually ignored what they were talking to him about. He didn't pay attention to what they were talking to him about. Look at chapter 1, verse 7 of that same Acts. Acts 1, 7. Acts of the Apostles. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. Watch carefully. That was Jesus' response. Now, for you to know, it is not, that word not, is the Greek word O-U-K. It is not for you to know. That word not is the Greek word O-U-K. Emphatic negative. It is no, 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 no. Emphatic negative. It is no, 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 no. Meaning it is not going to happen. Restoring the kingdom to you is a no, 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 no. It's not going to happen. Then he now answered them. 
He now changed their focus in verse 8. Look at verse 8 of Acts chapter 1. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall, the power is not to go and fight government position with the governor. The power is for you to be a witness unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the world. You shall receive power so he made a distinction between their kingdom and his father's kingdom. He told them, it is not... Now take note of that word, times and seasons, okay? G give me that verse again, because I want to explain something there. Verse 5. Acts 1, 5. Acts 1, 5. Give me verse, 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 verse 6. Okay? When they therefore were come together... They asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Next verse now, observe. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons. The word time is the word chronos. Chronos. An arrangement or an order. The, the meaning of that word Chronos or time, arrangement or order has to do with the prophecies of the prophets, the incarnation, the death, the burial. <laughs> they were looking for times. Jesus gave them the times of the prophecy, Chronos. He, he, he took them from physical time and brought them to prophetic calendar of the prophecies when the fullness of time was come. God sent forth his son made of a woman. So even when the time comes, it is not going to be for restoring power. It is going to be for the manifestation of God's prophetic agenda, which is death, burial, and resurrection. I'm teaching here. So he said to them, times are in the Father's hand for the fulfillment of redemption. Then he talked about seasons, which is kainos, opportunity. It's not, it's not for you. No, no. The Father's plan is death, burial, re resurrection, incarnation. That is all that is in the Father's agenda for you. My kingdom is not of this world. That's why he used the emphatic negative. Then he now emphasized, you shall receive power. What you already told them in verse 4 and 5. Look at it. Acts chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. Acts 1 4 and 5. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. Next verse. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Verse 8. But you shall receive power. He reemphasized. He reemphasized the promise of the Father. You shall receive, and you shall be witnesses. You shall be the bearers of what I have done. A witness is a bearer of what Jesus has done. You shall be a witness of what I have done. Again, they were to preach a specific message. What he has done. Check the sermons in the book of Acts. Nothing was said in the book of Acts about Israel. Nothing. In the sermons in the book of Acts, nothing was said about Israel. Nothing was said against Caesar. Nothing was said against Pharaoh or for Pharaoh. Nothing was said against Nero or for Nero. Nothing was said against Festus or for Festus. Nothing was said about commerce. Nothing was said about business. In the messages in the book of Acts because there is a kerugma to the gospel. There is a specific information. So he defines the message and the method. The message and the method. Peter's first sermon. Look, Acts chapter 2, verse 14 to 37. Acts 2, 14 to 37. It was Christ-centered. The entire sermon of Peter at Pentecost was death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and what he gave. As soon as he quoted Joel in Acts chapter 2, as soon as he quoted Joel, he began to explain Christ. Look at Acts chapter 2 verse 21. Acts 2 21. Peter's sermon. And it shall come to pass 
that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 22. 222. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as you yourselves know. As you yourselves know. And he stayed on that. He kept talking. He kept talking. He kept talking. He kept talking about the death, burial, and resurrection. Then in verse 37 of Acts chapter 2, Peter sermon. 37 of Acts chapter 2. Now when they had heard this, what did they hear? Death, burial, resurrection, and all that has happened to Jesus with all the prophets he was referring to because the message is one. They were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Men and brethren, they were pricked in their heart when they heard G about Jesus. When they heard the message of Jesus. That word pricked, that word pricked is a Greek word katanuso. K-A-T-A-N-U-S-S-O. Katanuso. To be pierced by the side. To feel a pain or to have a feeling. Let me ask all of you a question. How many of you have ever received an injection before? How many of you? Because there may be some people that have never been injected. I have received many in my lifetime. If they count my number of injections, it can be shared for everybody in this house. <laughs> Especially when I was young, coming up and all that. All right, so I've received a lot of injections in my life. Now, when they inject you, when they inject you, is there a pain? Or you wouldn't know. No matter how skillful the doctor or the nurse, you will still feel something. Some of them are not skillful. You will feel everything. <laughs> and I don't like such people to try it on me. You will feel everything. And some of them, they will choke the first place, choke the second place, and be telling you sorry. And be cleaning it. Then they will clean it again and say, wait some more. Then they will choke again. At that time, they will make you feel the pain more. But there are some people that are very skillful. By the time you turn and they clean the place, the needle has gone in. But you will still know that something entered. Is that true? You may not feel pain, but you will know that something has entered. That pricking, that pricking is how it happened to their heart. The message pierced them. They felt the piercing. That's the word pricked. They were pricked. When you preach the message by the power of the spirit, people's hearts are pricked. Are you still in the building? When you preach the message by the power of the Holy Spirit, people's hearts are pricked. Matthew 27, 49. You'll see the use of that word, katanuso. Matthew 27, 49. You'll also see it in John 19, 34. Used for the crucifixion of Jesus. How they pierced his side. And you feel it. If you observe, he never addressed individual issues. Peter never addressed individual issues. He preached Jesus. He never talked about their situation changing. He never talked about their finances improving. He never talked about any other thing. He preached Jesus and they were pricked in their heart. Which is the direction of the Spirit's walk, the hearts of men. When the right gospel is preached, the Holy Ghost walks in the hearts of men. Notice, their response was the same. 3,000 people, one response. Sirs, what must we do? 3,000, one message, the same response. When the message is right, it will be the same response all the time. One message, 3,000 people, same response. Sirs, what must we do? He answered, repent. Repent. The word repent is the word to change your mind. Change your mind. The word mateneo. M-A-T-H-E-N-O-E-O. -E -E change your mind. Exactly what Jesus did to them in Matthew 20, I mean in Luke 24, 45 to 47. What Jesus did to them in Luke 24, 45 to 47. So what, what just happened? 
in Acts chapter 2. Did Peter say anything extraordinary? No. Peter preached what he was told to preach. But the event he described in his preaching was extraordinary. He didn't say anything extraordinary. He preached what he was asked to preach. But the event he described in his preaching was extraordinary. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. So it is not in the way the message is preached. It is in the content of the preaching. Are we still in the building? That's why it's a keruguma. Jesus raised from the dead. And he is alive now. He will convince men when you use his words. He will convince men when you use his words. You simply use the spirit's words for the spirit's walk. You simply use the spirit's words for the spirit's walk. The spirit's words for the spirit's walk. Acts 2.41 Acts 2.41 Then they that gladly received this word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Look at the word received. They that received this word is the word apodekomai. Apode komai. A-P-O-D-E-C-H-O-M-A-I. It means to welcome, to embrace it. To welcome or to embrace it. They didn't determine what he said. They only embraced what he said. They didn't influence what he said. They received what he said. You will see that word applied in Acts 18.27 Acts 21.17 Acts 24, 3. Acts 28, 30. I go over it again. Acts 18, 27. Acts 21, 17. Acts 24, 3. Acts 28, 30. To welcome. To embrace. They embrace what he said and there was no excellency of speech in what he spoke. There was no excellency of speech in what Peter spoke. I want to repeat. There was no excellency of speech in what he spoke. In fact, there was no oratory in what he spoke. And I'm sure someone is going to say, how do you know? In a short while, you will know how I know. Acts 4.13. Acts 4.13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. So that will show in the way he preached. His illiteracy, his ignorance, and his lack of excellency of speech, his lack of eloquence, his lack of oratory will show in the way he spoke. Put it up. Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. The priests were angry. How can these illiterates take over the whole place? They are not even polished. They are not even skilled. They don't even have oratory. Yet, the people are listening to them in thousands. For 3,000 people to answer an altar call, it will show you how many were in the place. They held the city bound. By the message of Christ. And by the power of the Holy Spirit. When you preach it right. You will see people coming to salvation. What are you talking about? Somebody say I've been preaching. Nobody has accepted. You, you Examine what you're preaching. Because if it is preached well. It will be the same response all the time. People will be pricked in their hearts. If the message is right. People will be pricked in their hearts. And people will get saved. People will be pricked and they will get saved. Because it's not you. Is the Holy Ghost at work. The Holy Ghost made the difference. The Holy Ghost made the difference. In chapter 3 of Acts, they preach the same thing. Christ. In chapter 5 verse 30, put it up for me. Chapter 5 verse 30. Acts 5 30. 
The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hung on a tree. 31. Him had God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Same message. Same message. In chapter 6 and 7, see Stephen. Brother Stephen preached the whole Bible before he died in one service. Acts chapter 6 verse 10. See what Stephen said. Acts 6 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he speak. So the spirit of God was operating through Stephen as he gave them a chronicle of how the gospel has traveled from the Old Testament to the New Testament. He preached the message. He preached the scriptures. He preached Christ. When we go for evangelism and we preach Christ, the power of the spirit glorifies Christ in the salvation of men. If, if it's not the message, if it is not the message people are responding to, it is not Christ's salvation. If it is not the message people are responding to, it is not Christ's salvation. And if there is no salvation, there cannot be spiritual growth. No historical facts are being proven. No archaeological facts. No scientific discoveries were said in the message. There was only the history of Jesus told by the Spirit alone. The message of the gospel is a faith message. Write it down. The message of the gospel is a faith message. Such that a man has to believe. Such that a man has to believe. If I get healed and you tell me God is good, someone can believe it because no faith is required. If I get healed and you tell me God is good, someone can believe that because no faith is required. But if you tell me that someone died for me, he was buried and he rose, there is no proof, no signs, no marks but you give me the words of the spirit. And he comes to me in the words. Without sensory evidence. Just like Abraham. No sensory evidence. No feeling. I believe what I didn't see. Then I have arrived. I am now in Christ. I believe what I didn't see. Then I have arrived. I am now in Christ. Any order is not the gospel. It can draw crowd. It can draw excitement. But it's not faith by the spirit. And it is not salvation by Christ. Any order can draw crowd. It can draw excitement. It can gather people. It can wow people. It can keep people spellbound. But it's not faith by the Spirit. Therefore, it cannot be salvation by Christ. Therefore, it can never be salvation by Christ. When we preach the right word in the power of the Spirit, men are genuinely saved. Salvation is a response to a message of faith. Salvation is a response to a message of faith. There can be no salvation outside that. Salvation is a response to a message of faith. We preach Christ and him crucified. We preach Christ and him crucified. To those that perish, it is foolishness. But unto us that are saved is the power of God. Unto us that are saved is the power of God. That your faith should not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Bless this morning. Are you blessed this morning? Get on your feet. That's all I've got for you in this service. Glory to God. If it is not the message of Christ, it cannot be the salvation of Christ. If it is not faith in what Christ has done, it cannot be genuine salvation. Any other thing that will gather people and make people answer an altar call outside the kerugma of the gospel, then it is not the salvation that Christ offers. Say with me, I am anointed. Say it very loud. I am empowered by the Spirit to preach the gospel to every creature. I preach Christ. 
I preach him crucified. I am empowered by the spirit to be a witness of the gospel. Can I hear a powerful amen? amen? Lift your right hands. Father, we pray for everybody this morning. Thank you for the privilege of building your people, equipping your people, bringing clarity to your people, and causing your people to rise up to their true identity, to rise up to their true responsibility in spiritual growth, to get the gospel to the nations of the world. And we rejoice for the privilege we have to manifest the glory of God in these last days. Thank you that everyone here is sincere and without offense. Thank you that everyone here is committed and focused on this assignment. Thank you that everyone here is enabled by the Holy Ghost to be a witness of the gospel. And in the name of Jesus, we rejoice that you walk with us, confirming your word with signs and wonders following. Everyone online, everyone on television, everyone in our campuses, Father, we rejoice an army rising all over the face of the world that will get people saved and disciple them and raise an army for you all over the blue marble planet and we decree that the enemy and his cohort their strategies are totally nullified in the name of Jesus we declare that the word of God is going forth and like it was in Ephesus so mightily grew the world and prevailed the world will grow in our city it will grow in our nation it will grow in our world it will grow in in our communities in the name of Jesus and we declare the word of God prevails the word of God prevails the message of Christ prevails the message of Christ prevails the message of Christ prevails thank you father for answer prayer in Jesus precious name and every believer says a powerful amen are you blessed this morning can we give the Lord a great shout in this building is that a shout or a scream? Glory! Amen. Get a good offering. Let's give this morning and honor Jesus. We give for the assignment. We give for the work. We give to advance his kingdom. We give to advance his cause. And it's a joy, a privilege, and a delight to give for the advancement of God's kingdom. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Father, we give in faith, we give with joy. Thank you for everybody giving this morning. And we declare that our offerings are a sweet smell before you today. And we thank you that you are building an army of people that will, that will preach this gospel like never before. And we rejoice for the privilege today in Jesus' precious name. And every believer sees a powerful amen. amen. Hey guys, online, it's a joy being with you this morning. What a breakfast you had this morning in the world. You stay in the world and you don't want to miss tomorrow morning. I'll be preaching at 8 a.m. GMT plus 1 and 11 a.m. GMT plus 1 as we round up TED February edition. Throughout this year, every month, I'm going to take one week out for training. One week out for training. One week out for training. The other three weeks, we will teach doctrine and teach the message. One week out to prepare you for the walk out in the field. The whole of this month till December. Is that not a good thing to be a glad about? Is that not something to be excited about? We, we are committed to preaching this gospel all over the world and raising people to do the same all over the world. And we are not going to stop. We are not going to give up until the entire world is flooded with the fragrance of Jesus' grace. Can I hear a powerful amen? Enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this great service this morning. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I say glory to God. Hit it, let's do it as we celebrate this morning and bring our offering.